Hey, it's Matt Steen, co-founder of Chemistry Staffing, and this is another Chemistry Conversation. Today, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited today. Um, I am talking to, to Jason Esposito. Jason is the lead pastor at Crossway Church, which is um, in the Milwaukee suburbs, multi-site church. They're doing some really cool things out there. Great, um, gr great church and just love spending some time talking, talking with Jason, hearing what's going on out there and, and, and hearing what they're doing ministry-wise. He is, um, he's also an adjunct professor at Bethel and you'll you do some transformational leadership work there and, and teach some communication and preaching type stuff you know his uh d man is actually in communications and and one of the things that i love about jason is that he has um through the years you know really cultivated a method to help coach pastors into more effective preaching and communication and so jason thanks for taking some time to talk man yeah, thanks for having me, Matt. Appreciate it. So, so let's let's talk. I mean, this is this has been this has been quite a season, right? I mean, we, we, we won't we won't lie about that. A lot has probably changed um, in the way that we communicate with our congregations, whether it's preaching or anything else. But as you kind of look at the church landscape, how how has preaching changed in the last eighteen months? Say, yeah. Well, definitely, there's been incredible change and. The church has, and the word is way overused, and I probably shouldn't use it, but has continually had to pivot, right? Everyone's oh, tired yeah. of the word, but that's so overused now. And language matters. That's one of the things you talk about in uh, in the communication class. Uh, but, you know, I think one of the big obvious changes is that a lot of pastors who never did much online communication, online preaching, or they did it, but that was an afterthought, yeah. had to realize that, that is, that's crucial and that's central. Mm. And, and so that's been a, a huge uh, growth edge for, for many of us uh, yeah. who saw the online preaching as uh, positive, but not, not core. And so really looking at, is there a distinction between online communication in person? How do we navigate that? That's been a big piece of it. Also, another one is that just that the people that are listening to preachers today now know there's a lot more preachers out there because everyone <laughs> is very uh, online savvy right and content is everywhere so there is a little bit more of a buffet model out there where they're like hey i'm going to listen to my local preacher mm -hmm. and then oh i'm also going to listen to this person in california or this person in atlanta or this person in washington right. and so people are digesting more forms of preaching and communication as well as podcasts and, and all these different things. So I think that also is a dynamic that we have to recognize. Yeah. So, so lean into that a little bit. I mean, how did, how should we, I mean, because we've got this buffet mindset, I mean, how should we approach our own preaching um, knowing full well that, you know, somebody is going to probably watch, watch what I'm saying and then, you know, go and, and watch what Andy Stanley says and then, you know, catch, catch the late show with Rick Warren later on. I mean, how does that affect how we communicate? Well, I think, I think and we talk about this in the, in the lab that I'm going to be doing, this idea of, of discovering your own voice and, mm. and recognizing that like your voice is unique to you. And it's not about comparing yourself against some of these other communicators. We all have different gifts, all different strengths. I'm not even saying that I'm like the best communicator. I'm, I'm a coach. Right. And sometimes the coaches were decent players, but right. not necessarily the best players, you right. know? Uh, and so I'm a player coach, but I, I think one of the things is understanding who you are. And I, I think the temptation is to compare ourselves mm -hmm. is to, uh, unintentionally try to become more like someone who maybe we watch and we're like, well, they've got a lot more views than I have. Yeah. I think that would be a mistake because people are going to be attracted to uh, how God wants to communicate the message uniquely through your voice. And, and then we talk about this idea of just different bends and different quadrants and where we find ourselves in. And I think the more we understand that and we're, we're transparent and we're real as we're biblically grounded in, in our communication, I think we'll find that there's a certain people that are really going to learn and grow from us. But that said, it, we have to make sure we also are doing our homework. People can, they've always been able to do this in recent years. They can Google, fact check mm -hmm. you, those types mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. So we have to recognize that that's increased more. And uh, we've always wanted to preach with integrity, but we just need to be careful about 
you know, the information that we've heard, we're like, oh, that's true. And we thought it was true, but actually, and we didn't even know it. It might not be true or it's accurate. I, I just think there's a lot more um, people kind of checking on what yeah. we're saying and can, hey, why? And, and then understanding why that's different. They might say, hey, you said this, but I heard someone else say, say it this way. Why did you say that? So we only communicate a fraction of our preparation. We might right. have to in other type settings, which actually provides us a great opportunity as we expand the idea of preaching communication to kind of share a little bit behind the curtain and say, well, this is why I came up with it in this angle or understand this, which is different than this person over here. Yeah. Wow. So, so I love, I love what you just said. We only communicate a fraction of our preparation. I, I remember, I don't know if it was in Bible college or seminary. I don't remember which, I mean, they would talk about how you, you're probably putting in an hour, you know, an hour's worth of work for every minute your, your sermon's going to go. I don't know if you find that to be true or, or, or what you advise guys to do as they kind of lean into their part. How do you, how do you encourage guys to structure that? Yeah. Well, it's different for everyone because if you are a newer preacher, mm -hmm. then that might be the first time you've preached that sermon on marriage, or that's right. the first time you've ever preached in the book of Galatians or mm -hmm. Exodus or something, right? But yeah. if you've been doing it for a long time, I've been communicating uh, for youth pastor as a youth pastor in other areas for 27 years you know, I, I'm drawing on not just, you know, current research, but also, yeah. you know, what I've done in the past, as well as some are doing teaching teams. And I, I work as part of a team where we, we collaborate and that, yeah. that affects it. And then other people have, uh, whether paid or volunteer research assistants now, obviously online tools. So I, I don't kind of buy into any more like this kind of framework that says, you know, for every minute you preach, you need this much research because well, right. what we're talking about, there's so many different factors now. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So as you, as you lean in and you're coaching guys, I mean, what, what, what's one thing that, that as you kind of survey what the season ahead looks like that you're, that you find yourself advising guys more than anything else? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think one of the big ones is to be less assumptive. So we, we can't mm. be non-assumptive. That's impossible. Mm. We all have some, but less assumptive. And I think we assume a lot in our communication. I, I do this as well. I make mistakes and I have guys evaluate me and they're like, Jason, you're, you yeah. know, you need to be yeah. more or less assumptive, you know, so I can drift there. And, and the people that we're communicating to, uh, they don't have, many of them don't have the same background that most preachers do. Yeah. And so uh, and we've known this for years, but, but I think it's, it, it's more pervasive today. So if you said years ago, and, and neither of us are, are old enough, but if you said, like, I'm going through the trials of Job, there was a time in, and I'm speaking American culture right now, where people are like, oh, yeah, the trials of Job, you're going through a hard time, that's difficult, wow, I'm so sorry, you know, now I'm going through the trials of Job, they're like, well, what does Steve Jobs have to do with this? Exactly. And, you know, and so now that happened years ago, but I think it's even more now. It's like, what are the little numbers and the big numbers? I had someone ask me that, like, mm. why are there big numbers and little numbers in the Bible? Like, what's that? Yeah. You know, or, uh, you know, and so we have to be less assumptive. So we're preaching, we're communicating and the, just the, the base uh, information that people have about what we're communicating or communicating God's word, applying it to life, uh, is, is less. And so that, that, that affects communication a lot. So now the, the typical pushback on that is going to be, Oh, well, you're watering down the gospel or you're watering down the message. You know, how do you, how do you respond to something like that? When somebody says, Hey, you know, I, I be less, less assumptive, but you know, now we're getting into secret sensitive stuff or, yeah, you, you yeah. know what I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it's actually the opposite. I think by being less assumptive, we're, we're being true teachers and communicators mm -hmm. and, uh, and we're helping people to understand like why we're saying what we're saying. And yeah. so if you are, uh, you know, preaching on a, a certain text, uh, so you're in the Sermon on the Mount and you're talking, you know, whatever, I mean, whatever you're talking about, I think we have to, we, we're giving people more context, more understanding. Yeah. So yeah. we're going to have to go a little bit more into, well, what did this mean in that day? Or why is that written that way? Or Paul's writing this letter to who? Or, you know, and and and, and the other thing I think that people misconstrued is, is if you've been highly church, and it's highly church people that would say things like that, yeah. Yeah. you know, and you say a word, you say, well, sanctification or atonement, or even say the word sin, what the word actually sin means to them might be different than what sin means to you. And language is dynamic. 
and, and, and language takes on its own definition. And so even mm. words that I would say like 10 years ago, I thought this word meant this, and now it means this, it, it shifts and it, it changes. And so part of communication is understanding that and making sure that when we, we're saying words, even if we believe we're preaching and teaching to a highly churched kind of knowledgeable community, uh, you actually have different definitions mm -hmm. for some of the basic uh, Christian concepts. And so, and that applies not just to preaching uh, Christian concepts, but any type of things. There, there's words that we use today that don't, didn't even exist in the past. There's words that mean th different things in different cultures. So again, language is dynamic. So I, th I think being less assumptive is actually being a true teacher mm. and, and going a little bit deeper into how someone can then understand the biblical text and apply it to their lives. Very cool. Very cool. That, that's, that's really helpful. And I, I really love that, that idea of, you know, hey, maybe maybe we're, we're actually called to do more true teaching and instead of hiding behind our assumptions. That's, that's awesome. So as you, as you come alongside somebody, I mean, <clears throat> what, and, and you, you start to, you start to work with them. What, where do you start? I mean, how do you, how do you help somebody really get a sense of whether, whether, you know, where they are with their preaching with maybe what are some of the assumptions that they, that they don't realize that they're holding as they go into it? Where, where do you start with that? How do you begin that process? Well, I would start by asking uh, the individual, what is preaching? Mm. Like, just what is preaching? I, I find this in a lot of areas. Like, people, like, discipleship is such a big conversation right now. Yeah. And everybody's like, oh, we haven't done a good job. And all these surveys come out. And, and it's good. And, and I agree. we got to do a better job at discipleship. Yeah. But can we at least get beyond the page? What are we talking about? Yeah. And so you have to start with... And then once someone says, well, I think preaching is this, then I can start there. Start where they're at. This is what Jesus did, right? Start where we're at to take us to where we need to go. And so I think that's really important yeah. to make sure that we're actually talking about the same thing. Yeah. Back to, I talked about voice, like that's a huge one. Uh, er, young preachers, especially, will listen to whoever they like the best. And that's great. That's a great yeah. thing to do. And they uh, will copy that person. But yeah. eventually as you mature and you grow, you got to say, okay, what is a unique voice got? So helping people discover their voice and uh, that's a key part of it. And then, and then we talked about assumptions already. What are some of the assumptions that we have? And then there's just some basic things about communication and communicating whether to a group versus individuals that, uh, that I don't know if we've done enough work in understanding the dynamics. So right now we're one-on-one we're -on -one communication together. Right. And we're one-on-one -on -one communication through through a screen, and that has some slight nuance there. It hasn't been as much research done on that, but there's been a lot of research done on how one-on-one -on -one communication uh, uh, differs from how people actually listen in a group setting. Mm. And so, again, just kind of moving people, kind of talking through kind of where they're at, where, where they want to go, how they understand things, and then beginning to insert some different things. And then how, how does the culture really shift it, how people listen? So not yeah. only group dynamics or size dynamics, but do people listen today the same way they listened, you know, 500 plus years ago during the Protestant Re Re right. Reformation or 2000 years ago during the time of Jesus? Like, do we actually hear things in, in a different way? Yeah. And so all of that, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, presenting different pieces of it, but yeah. start with the definition is what is preaching? What are we even talking about? That's awesome. And so you, you talk about how we have changed our listening habits. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing probably even in the last five years, we've seen some significant changes in the way that people listen to, to group communication. And I, I can only imagine what that looks like. Yeah, and we can't deny the influence of, right, of, the, of YouTube, of, yeah. of streaming services, Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, you know, yeah. HBO Max, they all, they all have them now, right? Yeah. And also now the impact of our Zoom conversations and, and even how you do a, a meeting on Zoom versus in person and those dynamics. I mean, all of facts, it's still preaching. We're still trying to preach God's word, be faithful to it, communicate, proclaim. Uh, but uh, there are there are some unique uh, nuances that can help us be more effective. That's incredible. So, um, so Jason, I, I, I could do this all day, um, just kind of just kind of tee you up and ask questions and sit back and just be old. Um, but I do want to, I do want to respect your time. So you are going to be working with us. You're, you're doing a lab um, for us. Tell us, tell us a little bit about what, what the preaching lab is going to be, man. Yeah. 
super excited about the lab. Um, it's going to be a, a lot like this kind of conversation. Uh, a big chunk of it's going to be synchronous and we're going to work through what is less assumptive, what's your voice, uh, yeah. what is preaching. Now we're gonna dive into uh, a, a, a framework that I think really can help us uh, communicate in an effective way. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna look at some you know, shortcuts or hacks, like these are little tips that can just uh, you know, exponentially kind of move your preaching forward and its effectiveness and all these things. Uh, and then there's going to be time. Obviously, there's it's not going to be all lecture. There's going to be a lot of dialogue. We are going to then there's going to be time outside of that where uh, you can send me your sermons and I'll do two coaching where I'll watch your ser two sermons yep. and then we'll, we'll do two individual kind of uh, coaching uh individual coaching workshops on, on those sermons. So yeah. kind of take it into practice. Very cool. That, that, sound, that sounds incredible. So, you know, preachers of all levels, or are you starting only with experts or, I mean, what, how are you, how are you approaching this? Yeah, every, at all levels, anyone can get better. Right. And oh. so uh, whether you feel like you really have the preaching gift and you're, you're the best preacher out there, you're the Michael Jordan, you know, LeBron James of preaching, or whether you feel like, man, I'm just, I don't even know if I can put two words together. Like yeah. I, I just, the principles that we're going to engage is going to help you wherever you find yourself. Yeah. And whether you're preaching to large groups, online, smaller groups, you're, you're more in teaching environments, uh, you know, it, it can, it can help kind of move the needle wherever you find yourself. Very cool. Jason, thank you so much for, thank you. I mean, Great thank you so much for what you're doing in Milwaukee. Thank you so much for what you're doing to coach pastors. And thanks for taking the time to talk today, man. I really enjoyed it and looking forward to, uh, to seeing what happens with the lab and, and, and you in the future. We, we've got all the information on, on the lab down below. Um, you can learn more about Jason there as well. And we're really looking forward to launching this. So Jason, thank yeah. you. Thanks. Great, great connect with you, Matt. Have a great day.